T. I'm the district public defender for the 23rd Judicial District. Y'all ready? All right, on April the 4th, 2018, as you know, uh, a young man by the name of Joe Clyde Daniels, also referred to as Baby Joe, was reported missing from his home on Garners Creek Road in Dixon County. Law enforcement responded to the scene and they did uh, searches all over the area looking for this young boy. We now know that later that morning, uh, one gentleman saw a child meeting the description of Joe Clyde Daniels 420 yards down from the Daniels house on Garners Creek Road. The gentleman uh, worked at Belmont University, was driving back through there and spotted this young man. He didn't think anything about it because it was in the front yard of another residence. The time he saw this young man was around 1245 to 1 in the morning. The significance of that is that is 45 minutes to an hour after my client in his confession said that he had killed this boy and gotten rid of the body. So that was the first indication we had that what he had confessed to was not true. We also know from videotape of a neighbor's surveillance camera that when my client said he had beaten this young boy to death and left him essentially a bloody mess and put the body in the car and take and took the car and got rid of the body, we know that's not true because the surveillance video shows that that vehicle never left the house during that time period. So there was no blood evidence of the victim in the house, no blood evidence of the victim in the car, and the vehicle did not leave as my client confessed. So that was first indication we had that maybe this child just ran away and was abducted. So we had the witness who saw the young man on the road, and then this week I've talked to two ladies in Benton County, one of which works for the Board of Education in Benton County. They were at a store in Camden, Tennessee, the morning of April 4th, which is the same day that Joe Clyde Daniels was missing. Uh, they were in a store at approximately 8 that morning, which is before the Amber Alert went out on Joe Clyde Daniels. So when they saw this young man in the store, uh, they didn't have any reason to think anything about it. Later that evening, when the assistant manager in the store saw the Amber Alert on the news, she recognized that the boy she had seen was who she believed to be Joe Clyde Daniels. She and the manager of the store notified the Benton County Sheriff's Department. Benton County Sheriff's Department went over and talked to the ladies. Uh, they then made a referral to Dixon County and let Dixon County know that they had two ladies that believed they had seen Joe Clyde Daniels in that store at about 8 o'clock that morning, that he was in a bus that was a school bus converted to a camper or RV that had been painted black and white and had out-of-state tags. She believed the tags were either Massachusetts or Wisconsin, but she can't remember that now. For the next two days, she never heard back from law enforcement, so she called Dixon County to remind them that they had seen the boy they believed to be Joe Clyde Daniels. And that they had a video that would show the boy in the store and the man they described as an older white man with salt and pepper hair, salt and pepper mustache, and she believed a salt and pepper beard. The significance of that is there was no Amber Alert at that time, so she didn't think anything about it except she noticed that the child was nonverbal. He didn't talk. When she smiled at the child to try to get a reaction, uh, he didn't speak, he didn't talk, he just looked at her with a blank stare. When she went home and saw the news, she realized 
uh, that the boy she had seen she believed to be Joe Clyde Daniels. So she notified law enforcement. She immediately got on a computer and started searching the sex offender registry in the state the bus was tagged to, uh, hoping that she might see the man that she saw with this boy in the store. There were no other children with the man, no other adults with the man. This man and a small nonverbal boy uh, that she identified as being Joe Clyde Daniels. She was so confident that it was Joe Clyde Daniels that she called law enforcement two days later to get them to follow up. When I talked to these ladies with my investigator yesterday, she advised we were the first people that have come to talk to them to ask for the videotape or to get a report from them. She has not heard from the TBI, not heard from law enforcement in Dixon County. After approximately a year, uh, she decided law enforcement was not going to follow up on it, so they put the tape back in their security system at the store and recorded over it. But she's confident that she saw Joe Clyde Daniels. She described him as wearing cowboy boots that were brown with a flat toe. I've talked with the family, and we've known for some time that Joe Clyde Daniels had boots like that. You've got a photograph that shows him wearing those boots, and we know the morning he went missing, the boots were missing also. So because of all this, we think there's a, a good chance this child was abducted, and rather than waiting on this information till we get to trial, since there's a chance that kid is still out there alive, uh, I felt like the public and law enforcement need to know, and they need to make efforts to find this young boy and also try to track down the gentleman in this black and white school bus van. Are you suggesting that your client might not be in jail today if police pursued this lead and had a copy of this video? If, if they'd gotten a copy of the video, pursued the lead, found that black and white bus, um, and had been able to recover Joe Clyde Daniels, then obviously, yeah, he wouldn't be in jail. Um, we know now that my client's confession is false because we have video evidence that he never left that house with the body. TBI went back and executed a search warrant thinking maybe the, the young boy was in the yard. They didn't recover the body of Joe Clyde Daniels. So we know he didn't leave in the car. We know he's not buried in the yard. We know that three witnesses believe they seen him um, after my client had confessed to killing him and getting rid of the body. So there's an awfully good chance this young man had made it at least 420 yards down the road and got abducted. If what they're saying is true, why do you think authorities did not uh, follow up? Well, as you know, my client confessed two days later, and I think what they did once they got a confession, they just shut the investigation down pretty much. They were looking for a body, uh, but they were not, look, not looking for Joe Clyde Daniels as a, a live boy after that. The, a neighbor had a surveillance camera outside, and it was aimed toward their driveway. And so TBI and my office were able to determine that when my client said he killed the young boy, put him in the trunk of the car, and left in the early morning hours, we now know that that's impossible because the vehicle never left the house. And you can see it on the video. No, I asked the ladies if anybody had, uh, had maybe shot video off of it. Uh, neither of them had made a still shot uh, or uh, copied the video. And I've not talked to everyone who was there. There was a cashier we'd not been able to locate um, who also saw this boy. But to my knowledge, no one reproduced that video in any way. Well, we received 10 terabytes of discovery on an external hard drive in February. And as you know, 10 terabytes is a lot of information. As we went through it, we found a lead sheet from Dixon County uh, that wasn't finished. And we knew then that they had not followed up on that lead. 
So we followed up on it, went and interviewed these witnesses and found out that they had, in fact, seen this young boy that was nonverbal, wearing cowboy boots like Joe Clyde Daniels, and that they believe was Joe Clyde Daniels. The paperwork indicates that uh, a deputy in Netterville from Benton County contacted uh, Dixon County and Officer Lovell, um, and then the lead sheet doesn't have anything else to indicate that they interviewed, went and got the tape, or did anything. And we know from talking to these two ladies, who are the manager and the assistant manager in this store, that no one came and got the video and no one came and got their statements descriptions of the man, description of the bus, or anything like that. Is the officer, you the officer Nettable uh, is in law enforcement in Benton County. Lovell is with Dixon County. Oh, okay. Officer Nettable told us he made a referral to Dixon County. He told them he had two women that said they had spotted who they believed to be Joe Clyde Daniels and that the store had a video that would show it. He then told his supervisor that he was not going to do any further work because he'd referred it to the county where the crime was being investigated, and he felt like he'd done his job. No, no, the skeleton uh, shirt was not on the boy. He was wearing pants and a T-shirt. Uh, but I don't find that unusual. If you had just abducted a child within the past hour or two, uh, you're not going to take him around wearing the same clothes that he would have been abducted in. Is your client aware of this information? Have you talked to him about it? What did he say? I have not talked to my client um, about this. Uh, I just interviewed these two ladies yesterday, and because of what I believe is a strong public interest in the safety of this young boy, I decided to go public with it because uh, I don't want to wait to a trial that may take place next year, and if this child's been abducted and still being held hostage, I don't want him to sit there in that type of misery that long. Did the ladies seem frustrated, relieved that they're finally saying this out the open? The assistant manager was very frustrated that law enforcement didn't come get the tape and talk to her. She even called two days later. Uh, to Dixon County to remind them. So, yeah, she was frustrated. She believed strongly it was Joe Clyde Daniels. She believes he was abducted, and she felt so strongly about it, she was searching sex offender databases herself in the state where this bus was registered to. We received 10 terabytes of discovery on an external hard drive in February. So as we went through 10 terabytes, which you can imagine how long that is, one of the things that we happened upon was this lead sheet and the documentation that this referral was made to Dixon County Sheriff's Department. And we saw that there was no follow-up. So we then contacted these ladies uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, they were interviewed by my investigator, and then my investigator and I went and interviewed them again yesterday. And based on the interview of both of these ladies, we determined that they were confident they had seen Joe Clyde Daniels, so confident that she was searching a database on sex offenders in that state. And she just doesn't recall now if it was Massachusetts or Wisconsin. But she knows it was not a Benton County kid. She works in the school system at Benton County, and she had not seen this child before. She said he appeared to be dazed, he wouldn't smile, and he wouldn't talk. My client's first statement to police were that this young boy had gotten up uh, in the early morning hours, had peed in the floor, that he put him back to bed, and that when he woke up at 5.30, 
the young boy was not there. He looked around the house in the yard over toward the neighbor's house because this young man, uh, being autistic, escaped all the time. I mean, it, they would run, and, and autistic kids sometimes do that. Um, one of my staff members has an autistic grandchild, and just this morning, he got away from their house in less than 30 seconds and was at their neighbor's swimming pool. So I know this is something that occurs. But we know he first told them that he woke up at 5.30. Uh, the young boy was not there. He looked around the house, looked around the yard, and then he got the older brother. They got in their car and drove around the neighborhood trying to, to find him. We know from the neighbor's video that is the only time the car left that morning was a little after 6 o'clock when he and the older brother left to go look for this boy. So I believe his first statement was true. The video corroborates his first statement was true. But after about five or six hours of being interrogated, threatened with the death penalty, and essentially told, if you tell us uh, the truth, which is their truth, you'll walk out that door, he then essentially broke down and gave a false confession. My client was mentally ill. Bipolar 1, he was on Respidol, lithium. He'd had 200 milligrams of trazodone, lenectol. And I think because of the mental illness that he succumbed to the pressure by the TBI, and they use techniques called the Reed technique where they can get people to confess. And we know from the DNA exoneration cases that 25% of those people had given false confessions to crimes. TBI in Dixon County never followed up. These ladies said they never came to him, never talked to him, never asked for the video. My office was the first ones to talk to them, take detailed statements, and ask for the video. And that's two years later. So t for two years, TBI in Dixon County never bothered to go talk to these ladies, never bothered to drive down and get a copy of the video. They didn't do anything. The deputy Netterville saw the video. The video shows the young man from the side. Deputy Netterville told our investigator he didn't think it was the boy, but because of the quality of the video, he couldn't say. He said it could be Joe Clyde Daniels or it couldn't be. So no one's been able to see the video and to see the face of this young boy. Uh, these witnesses did see the face. The one that works for the school system loves kids. She tried to engage this young man and smiled at him, and he was nonverbal and would not react. Uh, but she saw him up close, and as soon as she saw his picture on the Amber Alert, she told her husband, that's the kid I saw in the store. Are you saying Baby Joe is still alive? I can't say he's still alive. I can tell you that 60% of children that are abducted are not killed. They're kept captive. So there's a, a real possibility and because of that, I hope law enforcement will try to locate um, this kid and try to locate this black and white bus from out of state and start following leads. Because if he's still alive and being held somewhere, he needs to be found. And that's more impo important than this case or a trial or anything else. And just to clarify, you believe Baby Joe left the house on his own and was abducted somewhere in the neighborhood? I believe... Based on the witness, the gentleman that worked at Belmont University, he saw uh, someone wearing a skeleton pajamas 420 yards down the road from the Daniels house. He was alone. No one else was with him. No adult, no other kid. So, yes, I believe that as he often had done, that he got out of the house. He got at least 420 yards down the road, and I believe he was abducted. Yes, they do have a statement from that man. And so TBI knows that that man saw uh, Joe Clyde Daniels 45 minutes to an hour after my client had confessed to killing Joe Clyde Daniels and getting rid of the body. And, and the reason I say that 
based on that man's statement, it's impossible that my client had already killed Joe Clyde and gotten rid of the body because Joe Clyde's still standing on the side of the road 420 yards down the road from his home. So that that indicates that, yes, the kid got out of the house on his own. He made it over 400 yards down the road. He was standing by himself in a yard in the wee hours of the morning. No, I mean, I can't think of, of anything else. I just think it's important uh, in a matter like this. I thought about it. I prayed about it, and I just decided I couldn't settle on this to trial. It might be next year with COVID-19 or the year after before we try it. And if there's any chance that these ladies did see who they believe to be Joe Clyde Daniels, and he's in a black and white bus from out of state, that needs to be followed up on. And I hope law enforcement will try to find him. Thank you. Thank you.